Hello everyone, I'm very happy to see you here before lunch uh, and I hope uh, to take you on a journey through the licensing of Python packages. Uh, it may be quite a wild ride, uh, so bear with me and I hope you will enjoy it. First, the standard disclaimer. I am not a lawyer and uh, this disclaimer has been so popular in internet discussions that it has, it has earned its own abbreviation. I will not try to spell it. Uh, it basically means that you should not trust any legal advice that a person who prepends their claims with that uh, produces. And I would try very hard not to produce any legal advice during my talk. This is going to be purely technical talk, so, so if you don't like legalese, and maybe there are some people like that, uh, that will be fine. Are there any lawyers here? Yes, wow, great. I'll lie. And talk, talk to that guy if you want to know something about the legal side of you. And I've got uh, some, some more questions for you. Uh, who has ever packaged a Python project, library or application? Yeah, great. Who has ever written a setup pi file? Almost everyone. A pi project toml file? A bit less, but not that much. Great. Who cares about Python package metadata? Wow, okay, I expected like five people. And mostly from my team sitting there. Great. Uh, I hope that even those of you who did not raise their hand will find something useful from my talk. I told you I'm not a lawyer. Who am I? Uh, we'll get to that. So there are project authors, people who actually produce code. They release it, they give the hottest, the freshest, the newest. Um, and in order to distribute whatever they've written, they need to describe their project in a, some standardized way. That standardized way is then taken by build tools, which produce machine-readable uh, metadata out of the description that is actually typed with your fingers. So those build tools produce metadata that's machine-readable. And there is another category of tools and consumers, uh, those who take that metadata and try to do something with that. And try to do something with that is a, quite of a general term. But it may be Twine, which publishes your package to PyPI. It will read the metadata produced by the build tools and do some magic with that, and then boom, your package is there, available for everyone. I am also another kind of a consumer. Uh, I care about Python package metadata because I'm a software engineer uh, working mostly on packaging Python libraries and applications into an operating system called Fedora Linux. And I care about translating those Python native metadata into a format known as RPM. Uh, so I rely very much uh, on whatever is prepared by the package authors uh, so that I can consume, consume that. And this also quite uh, narrows the view I've got on the whole matter. So as you see, there are a lot of actors. There are project authors, build tools authors, publishing tools authors, some other unknown consumers. And they all rely on what's standardized. And we all get through it. So first, with my Fedora hat on, if you ever want people to use your code, you should license it. If you skip that step, uh, no one can use it. And I, as a Fedora package maintainer, care a lot about whether I can use, copy, and modify the code you provide. And not only that, I need to grant that right to people who will use the operating system. And I have no idea who they might be, right? I, I cannot restrict uh, their usage by Fedora's policy. So I s strongly rely on open source licenses being there. So I, I need to be sure that the package is legally distributable. Um, when you don't know, there are great resources that will help you to choose your license for you. And uh, the distribution of licenses out there in the wild world is that uh, there's quite a few licenses that are widely popular, then another quite a few that are moderately popular, and many, many, many more that are used just with one or two projects. Uh, probably whatever you would like to ask people to do or not do with your software has already been invented by someone. 
So even though technically you can write your own license, please don't do that. Uh, I was yesterday at a talk uh, by Anvesha Das. If you haven't seen it, um, maybe look at it from the recording. She's a lawyer, and she says, don't do that. So uh, I, I trust her advice uh, on that. Uh, from the um, downstream packager perspective, uh, a own, an own license, a custom license, is a legalist hell. That would take a lot, lot of time. So when I tell you, please license for your project, what do you actually mean about that? Um, typically, you should include a file with the terms and conditions of the use of your software in your root projects directory. Uh, as I said, there is quite a not too long list of licenses that are widely popular. Uh, and those licenses go by their names. They are widely recognized just by the uh, abbreviation they go by. So from my Fedora's point of view, I need to locate the license file or files, depending how many you've got there. I need to know exactly where they are in your distribution. And I need to know what is the name of the license. Two things, right? Easy, trivial, two things, nothing much. And when it comes to the license name, uh, Historically, like, I told you that you can write your own license, even though I don't recommend you to. Uh, that means that this is quite a hard field uh, when it comes to standardizing. Uh, it's not easy to standardize something that uh, will not ever be complete, um, but folks from SPDX, Software Package Data Exchange, have attempted that, and kudos, kudos for that, because they uh, have came up with a list that has become de facto a standard in the industry. They curate a uh, list of valid case-normalized SPDX identifiers, uh, which can be found uh, under this URL. They do much more than that. It's all related to software bill of materials, but that would be a topic for another talk. I will not go there. Um, thanks to that effort, uh, it is possible to generate license data that are machine readable, that can be parsed, that can be validated, and generally, they can reduce the human factor in, all the, in the whole field of license processing. Uh, SPDX identifiers can be combined into expressions. There is a language for that. There's a syntax for that. Uh, those, that means that you can express that your package has got a dual license or that it, it has got uh, bundled libraries in it. Also, as uh, the license list can never be complete, uh, SPDX standard counts with the fact that uh, some licenses are not on the list and provides you with a syntax to create your own custom identifiers. So with that, hopefully, each package can now uh, express the intention, the license it is distributed under. I told this is an industry standard. All cool kids in town are now using SPDX expressions, languages, frameworks, so on. Is Python a cool kid in town? Well, not yet. But we would really like it to be. And in order to set a standard or improve the standard, we need to understand what is the current situation. Uh, how do we specify licenses right now if you want to package something? It's 2024. PyProject Toml is the way. Uh, if you haven't worked with PyProject Toml, there is a poster at the poster session yesterday by Piotr Gnus. Uh, go take a look at why you should stop using SetupPy and migrate. PyProject Toml is uh, built backend agnostic. It's standardized. There is a specification, official, official specification for that. Um, and what does it say about licensing? Oh, and for those curious of you, I've got a, I, I've got a mind game. Uh, while I talk about that, try to imagine how would you add the information about SPDX expression into the field of PyProject Tom specification? What would you add? What would you deprecate? What would you do? <laughs> Currently, uh, PyProject Tom allows us to describe our package in the project table. And uh, that project table contains various keys. One of them is license. And that license key contains a table value, one of the two, mutually exclusive. So you can either uh, specify a text 
And this is exactly that. This is a free form text which cannot be really parsed and validated. And you can write whatever you want there. Although the popular build backends will tell you just put a SPDX identifier there. Don't go with a text. So that is also something I would encourage you to do uh, even under the current standard. You can also define another key, file. And that file is a string, has got a string value uh, to a one file uh, containing the license information. This file will be open and read at build time, and the contents of the file will be filled in into metadata. So it doesn't provide you a way to locate license files in the distribution. It just don't trans it doesn't translate to this kind of information. It just translates to the freeform text on the side of metadata. And that's not all, because PyProject Thomas specification says that if you're using one of the widely, re widely recognized licenses, you don't have to specify anything. Just use classifiers starting with license. And classifiers have plenty of good use in the Python world, but licensing is not one of them. And this is a horrible idea to use that. First, because the list of classifiers is not complete. There are popular licenses out there which are not covered by classifiers. And second, and more severe, they are ambiguous. You cannot derive the license of a package based on a classifier, as you can see at the example. And that, on the side of my project TOML, what you type when you create a package is translated to one single field currently present in the standard of the metadata. It's a field called license, and whatever you write in, in license text or, or, or file will get translated to that line. It's a free-form text. So remember I told you we need two fields? We need to add just two fields to PyProject TOML? Well, we need at least four, because we also need to cover metadata if we want to extend the standard. We need one for the SPDX expression and another one for the paths to the license files. But in two standards, two places. Okay, that starts to get a little bit complex. So I hope you still think about adding those SPDX expressions. What would you do? This is the state. We need to add something new. But before we get to the solution, or the proposed solution, let's spend one more minute on standards. Because it may seem like a trivial task. I just need this small piece of information added. So and my life would be all happy and, and, and goalie. But in Python, and I think every other language, to be honest, uh, standardizing is a much more complicated effort. So for example, you don't want to break things for users unnecessarily. Like, unless you've got a really good reason, you should not create changes that will angry uh, half a million people somewhere there in the world. Like, you don't want that. Um, Ideally, your standard should help increasing the clarity of the whole ecosystem. Right now, we are in some kind of a chaotic, uh, chaotic way of uh, declaring licenses. Freeform text is far from good. It's not enough for us today in 2024. So we would like the new standard to make the obvious correct path easy to do. It shouldn't be complicated for project authors to think about like how do I how do I make up the license how do I declare it it should be as easy as possible and ideally the correct path should be really straightforward then you should need to think about deprecations what should be straight away removed what cannot coexist uh, what can exist how about the deprecations how long do we want to have things deprecated? Do we want to set a timer on that? Errors and warning guidance. Another bit. We would like the new behavior to be consistent. Uh, should we really nudge the users, the project authors? Should we ask you to uh, make it really great and cool and validated and parsable, even if you're building a package just on your local machine and you never intend to distribute it? Like, Why would we do that? But then if you want to publish your package to PyPI, 
how strict of an enforcement should be uh, expected there. Uh, should PyPI reject always invalid metadata? Uh, that's another thing to consider. The answer is probably yes, but, but you have to think about that. Naming. Uh, we want to add SPDX expressions. How, we do, how would we uh, name the, uh, the key, the field? We don't know. And bike shedding happens all the time. It's important to get feedback on your proposal, and people come and give you feedback, which is great, which is, you know, people come from different fields and they have different views. But naming is one of the hardest things, you all know that. And uh, last but no, not least, Python ecosystem is mature, is widely used. The use cases, uh, you, it's impossible to map all the use cases where Python is used and how. So you've got plenty full of consumers of that metadata. And if you set a standard, they will all have to abide it or ignore it. But you don't want people to ignore the standard. You want to, for them to follow it. Uh, so you have to be really mindful about the possible uses and accidental breakage because you just didn't think about something. Who's having a headache already? <laughs> we are adding these two fields. No, four fields. No. Oh my god. What do we add? Um, so at this point of my talk, you see what is the standard. You see what is the end goal of this whole uh, journey. You see where we are, where we stand at the Python point of view, like Python packaging ecosystem. And probably you can also see why it is not so straightforward and so trivial uh, to add something new and why we, don't, we are not there yet, in fact. So maybe you had some ideas about, uh, about adding the new key to PyProject Tomo. Uh, those are some of the actual rejected ideas that I pulled from the PEP. One of them was to just reuse the value we've got. Like, we already have licensed text, so let's just redefine it and say, OK, this is the SPDX expression. That's a problem, because PyProject Tom specification is not versioned. So if you're building, if you're writing a build backend, you would have to test the field, whether it parses as a valid SPDX expression. And if not, then fall back to a freeform processing. And it's horrible. Like, we don't want to do bad things to the project authors, but we don't want to do bad things to build the authors as well. Like, let's, let's think about users. Um, so another proposal was to add a license type key that would disambiguate. So it's either a SPDX expression or it's a freeform text. But that would amount to asking every single project author to add a boilerplate line and never change it, like it would stay there forever. That's not really beautiful. So maybe let's add a license expression key, another key in the table value. Why not? Uh, that may be a bit clearer, clearer, but then you've got to think text and file are mutually exclusive. How about expression? Will it be exclusive with the other two? Should the other two be deprecated? Should they coexist? And how and when? And then you have to teach every package, package outer, uh, out there which is mutually exclusive and which can exist, and they have to remember that, and that's also horrible. Uh, and the other idea was to add just a new top-level key, license expression, and expect it to be a valid SPDX identifier or expression. That is almost good. Uh, that only requires every project author to write 11 more characters. Uh, this will not create a backwards incompatibility, so that's, that's fine, but it also kind of leaks the internal thing. Like, now we've got SPDX expressions as a standard, but maybe in 10 years there will be something else, and it will be not called expression, but some other thing. Uh, so the final proposal about that key is a bit different. I will show you in a moment. So maybe some of you thought about one of those, or something similar. Uh, this, this, this has not made make it to the uh, final pr presentation. Uh, to the final draft. So, Jake is telling me that uh, I'm running slowly out of time. Uh, that's all right, uh, because let me spend those final minutes on just telling you 
what is the draft actually? Like, uh, with all the thing that that happened, uh, with all the context you've gained, uh, what does the PEP uh, propose? And one important thing to know to know to, to know at this point is that this is still a draft. We hope to have it standardized soon, and soon I will not quantify soon. I have no idea. Uh, but the draft is being very actively discussed on Python Discord, following the PEP process. And um, as we speak, as I talk, as the conference is happening, there are new ideas, what can be made simpler. And I hear Miro laughing because he's also taking part in the discussion. Uh, so what I will show you is not actually a draft that's published on the PEP side because I haven't had time to actually to finish the pull request for the changes. But this is what we hope will make, make it. Uh, it, will, it will be the fourth proposal regarding the, uh, the, the PEP. So, on the side of PyProject Toml, we would like to ditch the table values of the license key. Like nesting is almost always a bad idea. Uh, the more straightforward uh, the whole thing is, the better for everyone. You can uh, understand the intention behind the key. So there will be license key with a string value, and that string is expected to be a valid uh, SPDX identifier or expression, and build tools should validate that unless they have a good reason not to. For example, because they are very lightweight and they don't, uh, can't really incorporate the whole uh, validation mechanism. And on the side of uh, finding license files in the distribution, there will be a new key added, the one that doesn't exist yet. And the uh, question mark uh, uh, commented is there because this, that's actually the part that's being changed. So this is what it will be, but not, it's not there out there in the draft that's currently published. So the license file would be a list of files, uh, either paths or globs, and all the files matched by the processing should be included, well not should, must be included into distribution. And those two keys uh, will translate to the metadata, core metadata, license expression, new field, and license file, also a new field. Uh, license file can be zero or multiple times present, and each of them should contain one path to a one licensing file, which will make it very easy for consumers to find, to locate those files. Uh, license expression is expected to be a valid SPDX identifier. So that, those are our four new fields. There is a lot of more guidance regarding warnings, errors. There will be changes to wheels as well. Like we would like we, to finally standardize that the license files should be part of the wheel. We standardize where they will be copied to, so the uh, directory will be known. And if you're interested, go and read the PEP. Uh, it's not as long as it used to be, so it's digestible. Um, and thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for this. This was the first licensing talk I was able to pay attention to, actually. <laughs> if you have any questions, please, there's a microphone and line up behind it. We do actually have a question from online sources. So, in your opinion, what are the most friendly open source licenses that we can use for a new project? I am not a lawyer. <laughs> Sorry, I will, I'm not competent to answer this question. Okay, that was quick. Uh, so, <laughs> we have a question from the audience, please. Hi, thank you for your talk. Uh, I totally feel your pain. I'm a Debian developer, a Debian package maintainer, and uh, researching the licenses is, uh, the, takes most of the time when packaging a, a new software. Uh, do you know the, the reuse project from the Free Software Foundation? Uh, it uh, states that you put the license in every file at the top, in, at the header. 
Uh, and uh, regarding that, I, I, I was wondering if it's even, uh, if it even makes sense to have one license definition at, in a uh, project wide, because sometimes you have uh, uh, template files that have a different license and documentation that have even another license. So what do you think about that? Uh, I'm vaguely aware of reuse project. Uh, I know that you can uh, put the license information up on top of each file. Uh, the PEP del deliberately does not uh, take any stance on that, um, maybe in the future. I'm not sure if it's that popular yet. Uh, I, I haven't seen it that much out there. Um, SPDX expressions have got the grammar that allows you to combine all the licenses. So if you include files uh, licensed under different licenses, you should probably just combine the, uh, them into an expression using the join operator end. So, so we would have like MIT and Apache and something and something and probably break down in the comment what comes from what. That's the approach that Fedora has taken. We, we are combining the licenses into huge strings sometimes. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, more questions coming? Yes. Hello. Uh, a disclaimer, I know the answer. I just thought others would like to know it as well. So I, I seen the uh, recent BEPs are in the 700s, and this number is surprisingly low. How old is the PEP? like when it was originally proposed? Because you, you seem to think it is a long time, but you haven't said it. If you don't know the date, I looked it up, so. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you for your question. That is, uh, uh, that, that, that is uh, actually a, a, a curious thing. Uh, the uh, first draft of the PEP, or the idea to, whether to make it a PEP, uh, it will have its fifth anniversary on the 2nd of August this year. So Thank it you. is one of the longest uh, standing drafts in history. And maybe you're now thinking why. And I would like to uh, just sh give a big shout out to people who came before me because I jo I've joined this team just uh, half a year ago. And the draft is existing for much longer. The people who came and drafted that were people who spared a lot, a tremendous effort and time researching the whole thing in their free time, after work, like as a volunteer work. Without them, I would not be able to write it just like from scratch. They put a lot of work and I am not surprised that it's really hard to conduct such an effort for years uh, without burning out or life happen to you. So th th that's, that's basically the reason uh, we are just still not there uh, on, the, on the accepted path, hopefully so. Thank you, Mira, for the question. Tim, you're next. Okay, so I, I'd like to ask about the license files field that you're proposing. Are you going to define uh, how globs are supposed to work? I know that there is a standard for globs, and it has been the subject of quite a few CVEs, security problems, especially involving uh, relative path. So are you going to create a new standard for globs or that's simpler, or are you going to use some kind of existing glob standards that insecure? Uh, that's another great question. Uh, the current draft says that the globs must be parsable by the Python glob module. Uh, but the draft was written also maybe in time where there were not so many build tools written in different languages. Uh, so uh, it was pointed out that the, uh, this may be unnecessary limiting. Uh, and one of the proposals was to adapt POSIX glob standard. Yes, but the uh, Python globs module will insecurely parse globs that involve relative paths that go upwards with two dots. The two dots are explicitly forbidden. So there are limitations uh, put in the draft of PEP, like what you are not allowed to do. And the, the uh, relative paths are one of them, like upwards. Yeah, we, we can try one more with a little bit of leeway, but last one. Yeah, so thanks for this talk. I'm a bit new to uh, metadata specifically for Python packages, but uh, looking at the, the proposed syntax, I was a bit puzzled with the vendor word. So why, why use vendor specifically? 
Uh, that was just uh, an example of, uh, actually I took it and mingled from PIP. Uh, there are a lot of uh, packages out there that uh, for various reasons decide to put a copy of other licenses in them, mostly to make it easier to distribute. And uh, there is a common practice for those packages to put all the vendored copied uh, libraries into a special folder uh, typically called vendor or bundled or something like that. And then uh, they are expected to include the licenses based on the licensing requirements. So for example, MIT requires you to put a copy of the license file with every copy of the software. So that's the common practice. That's how uh, some of the libraries uh, bundle the software. Brilliant. Thank you, everyone for coming here today. Thank you, Carolina, for an amazing talk. And one big round of applause, please. Thank you. <laughs>